Hey there everybody, Jeff McLean here at the uh, 2010 Chicago Horror Film Festival with Dana. Martin, please. Martin, sorry. Dana Martin. And um, we got our uh, wristbands. Got a little, little thing. I got my, my, my one day pass. She does not because she doesn't, she doesn't need one because she's pretty. And I am ugly handsome. <laughs> and so uh, this is what we're going to do is uh, we're going to come around here. There are tons of people uh, to talk to. Uh, they had, uh, I think, bands here before. I think last night they had a band called Voltaire, uh, which is, was described as gothic uh, folk music. There are tons of films that they're going to be showing, short films and feature films. Why would you want to watch a scary movie? It's scary. Why would you want to watch it? To make your, your heart pound, your blood rush. I mean, it's just it's stimulating. Or to, you know, have an excuse to cuddle next to a girl and have her claw you. <laughs> Some guys just look good. I, yes. Clawing. Yes. I'm not saying that I like it. I'm just saying that when the, the nails and the skin and they go and it like touches, there's something magical happens. Lizette. Um, hmm. Can we strike a deal? Zet. I dress up mannequins like people I hate. Thank you. I love these. Awesome. Is there a microwave around? So the count of three, I'm going to do one, two, three. <laughs> but porn and blood. I need an adult. Ghost hunt? Investigation. But is it a hunt? I mean, are we going to be like walking around oh, yeah. with stuff? Pig stickers and painting ourselves up in the dark. War paint and all, yeah. It's Sweet. So it's like Lord of the Flies, but we're looking for ghosts. Kind of, yeah. It's kind of fun to just trample around in the dark, you know? So now, was, was this just arbitrary that this place was picked, or is there something, you know, to uh, the Portage Theater? Uh, just like anywhere else, there's always some small stories. Uh, anything we call credible, I couldn't say. Uh, one in particular is uh, there's an organ in front of the stage that's been known to play on its own on occasion. Um, Beyond that, we haven't had many in the, many things in the way of hauntings that have been reported. We do, however, have a uh, psychic coming through who's got certain uh, perceptions of things, so we're going to kind of research that a little bit and see where we go. We're showing a film called I Hunt Ghosts at 1130, which is a documentary that I'm executive producer for and in. Um, that kind of gives you a behind the scenes of how we do what we do. And then we're going to actually lead an investigation from midnight till about 3 a.m. This is uh, my friend's awesome movie, The Man Who Collected Fo uh, Food by Matthew Roth. And this is the uh, comic book, The Man Who Will Collect Food, that I created that's a uh, prequel to the movie. The movie is about an obsessive food collector who uh, he collects food products and he needs to keep them in uh, mint condition. And uh, because of that, he can't open his food and eat it. So, of course, he has to resort to cannibalism. My comic actually comes in uh, ten, 10 years before the movie, goes over his first kill and um, why he starts collecting food and stuff like that. I'm here with Gio. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Is that your real name? You don't have to tell me. Yes. It, it is your real name? Or you don't have to tell me? It's my short name. It's your short name. Ah, short for geography. We remembered you, I mean, literally for two years being the amazing girl who made the dead baby doll thing. So what happened? It's the doll faced horrors. I've been in school and finishing up school, so I'm trying to kind of incorporate my newer academic work. She's got uh, these wonderful t-shirts, which we actually bought two of them today. There is this little corvus over here that she sculpted herself. It's, it's got a wireframe body, it's got some wooden joints, so parts of it can actually move. Yeah, he's got um, wooden joints, so he, can, he doesn't bend in the wrong places, but he can bend on his joints there on the elbows and the legs, and he's got um, polymer clay parts here for his head and his feet and hands. There's one over here as well, which I think is uh, Zombie Ed that she sculpted as well. So are these the only two that you have so far? No, I have more, but these are the only two horror-themed ones, so I brought them with today. Well, you could, all you have to do is splash blood, like on the fairy or whatever you have, or the unicorn, like you break a torn off and shove it in its heart, and then uh, you got a horror unicorn, a horror corn. <laughs> I'm, uh, you don't have to do any of that. I absolutely love that you are here and that you are still doing your artwork. And uh, I hope that everyone buys everything you have. Thank you very much. Geo, not just a good car, a good artist. Uh, latex uh, glue. 
and, uh, and some cheap paint and, yeah. and Elmer's glue as well. Bathing suit, yeah. corset. How long did it take? About three hours. Yeah. yeah. The whole, wow. Yeah. Wow. And what's this? Uh, this is a bolt. You guys made up each other? Uh, we had help from our parents. Yeah. Okay. So all right. I'm not going to. All right. Sweet. Like, this is rice for maggots. So. Ooh, maggot rice. Yeah, so she was like huh? It's like Uncle Ben's. Yeah, basically. Only so, dead. but we covered ourselves up with like green and and white. Just, yeah. Pretty and much. Our, our parents came in and started dripping the, the blood and stuff. Nice. My parents did that too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They were, they were supportive of you being zombies. Oh, they didn't have anything to do with zombies. Uh, they're, they're doing time. What uh, what um, happened to you? Well, I think I got touched by the Grim Reaper, in which I think I'm affected. Maybe tomorrow I'll check my pulse of my heart. Making sure I'm not a bony freak. A bony freak, no less. Yeah, if I touch them. Oh, just touching. You don't, you don't even have to, like, eat their flesh or their brains or anything. No, but if I touch them, they get it. So by getting it, does that mean that they're, like, a zombie? Well, they turn into a Grim Reaper. They get infected. Oh, so a Grim Reaper. Yes, pretty much. That happens. So is it is it all bad? I mean, would, is it good to be a Grim Reaper too? Well, not that bad, but you're his minion. Oh, so you're you're kind of like a, a uh, independent contractor. So as far as being a Grim Reaper, would you do the typical Grim Reaper thing, like wear all black and have like a big scythe that you carry around? Well, I'll ask him about that. Oh, okay. So they probably have a dress code. Probably. Tell you not to touch me if I am affected. Absolutely. I'm not going to touch you. And not just because it's illegal. I've been um, doing research, I don't know, I guess independently since I was a kid, since I had my first experience when I was 17. My switch over to communication versus simple documentation, I shouldn't say simple documentation, but switching over to communication was um, kind of like a slow process that actually went from piece of equipment to experiment. Like we started investigating the obelisk, then we started investigating the radio. And um, from that, there's just a logical progression of devices to use to try to make contact. Um, a lot of them have been successful. I don't know who we're talking to, but I mean, we. We've talked to a woman, one of our members has talked to a woman that uh, thought it was still 1940. I've actually been led on a scavenger hunt around a location by, um, well, a dead person. Um, they basically went ahead and had me find their office equipment. Um, I can't explain how it happened. I can't debunk what happened. All I can tell you is that we shut a radio down to its most basic components and a voice came over it. And a voice gave us information that nobody on the team had. So we're talking to somebody. I don't know who it is. Take a, uh, you know, a, a good gander around, see all the wares that are there, and um, all the stuff that you could see, and all the stuff that really... Sorry. Whoa, whoa, ah. Okay, that's all right. I, I dribbled. Uh, I hear that you are the master of ceremonies here uh, uh, this, this year. Master Ron Fitzgerald, master of ceremonies here at the Chicago Horror Film Festival. Come now, see us. Did you uh, steal the crown from someone? Uh, there have been a, a few hosts, and I didn't steal the crown. Um, once they were in, you know, had gone insane from the job, I simply went into the asylum and, unbeknownst to them, took the crown and ran like hell with it. Oh, okay. So you just waited them for the go, you know, street rat crazy, and then grabbed the crown. Yes. Yeah, actually, actually I did that, and then Lizette distracted them with nudity and blood. Hey, that's a pretty good distraction, I hear. Do you have a, a new film coming out this year, or a couple, or...? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, I, I am doing the voice of the creature in a film that debuted here last night called Contagion. It's uh, about this black slime creature that eats people and uh, can then shapeshift into those people. Um, I have just been cast as Dracula in Dracula's Orgy of the Damned. Orgy of the Damned. Miss Fluff, a uh, uh, writer, director, actress? Uh huh. Yes. Brilliant. And a head, head bitch of Skinny Cow Productions. Man. <laughs> I like that thing because when it comes up, do you say the Skinny Cow thing and then somebody else moves? Yeah, he moves. I do the move. Yeah. You're moving. Are you part of the production? Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm part of the. I had no idea. We're doing a short film right now. We're in the process of making, talking about women covered in blood. That was her last weekend during our shoot. Um, we're doing a, a short called Conscience. Conscience. Oh, and we saw the trailer for that tonight. 
Yeah, she did. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. We look forward to it. How are you feeling about tonight? Uh, I'm liking it. I can't wait to see some movies. I got here kind of late. Oh. I was in a children's hospital earlier, you know. Oh, busy? Uh, yeah, a little bit, yeah. So what's the best way of getting rid of somebody? Oh, it depends on the guy. Oh. I do believe in karma. Oh. So if someone's a uniquely nasty, despicable person, I'll conjure up one of those Rube Goldberg Final Destination things. <laughs> nice. For the most part, just a car accident will do. Well, that's true, but that's kind of quick, though. What if the, you want them to suffer? Oh, I guess like 87,000 people a day. I can't, every one of them can't be a justice killing, you know. Well, all right, I can agree with that. So, uh, how am I going to go? Uh, I'm not going to ruin the surprise. Oh. Is it, is it going to, is it going <laughs> to... Well, you don't make plans for Christmas. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I'm a sculptor, I'm an artist, and I make these limited edition, handmade, sculpted collectibles of characters from your favorite movies, TV shows, comic books, etc. They're astounding, looking, looking at all of these. I mean, it's, it's extraordinary eclectic, which is great, because it's not just one single kind of version of a character, but it's multi-characters, so it's all, it's all pretty... Very, very, very cool. It takes me a few days to do the original sculpture. Once the original's done, then I can make a rubber mold of it and turn them out in quantity in plastic, which is what you see on the table here. Tim Burton Batman movie. Uh, I remember going into that theater and they passed out little flyers with collectibles that people could, could send away for. And on there was a couple of sculptures of Jack Nicholson and Michael Keaton in costume that you could get. And I, I looked at that and I said, those are really cool, but I bet I could do something like that. And so I got some sculpting compound out, and, and the first ones I made were Joker and Batman from that movie. So. Well, that's brilliant, brilliant. I'm a web developer, Facebook app, and iPad developer. So you are an incredibly rich man. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's what I thought, and we're best friends. <laughs> yes, we are now. You're on film, best friends. Best friends share millions. <laughs> so uh, you develop applications? Right, so currently we've developed a full-length video app that plays inside the iPad, uh, Facebook, the iPhones, and the iPod Touch. So it allows you to watch full-length film inside any one of these devices without advertising. Every time you watch something, you're supporting the filmmakers because they get paid for every time you watch. You can buy films, you can rent films, or you can download them to your devices. Fright Mobile, and as of right now, it's just for horror film directors. Someone can download them to their telephone device, so if they're on an airplane, they don't need to be over 3G or Wi-Fi. Um, that's, uh, that's the advantage of doing it on the phone. If you want to download it on your computer, you can do that too. The advantage of doing it inside Facebook is with these comments, when anybody posts a comment, all their friends can look at a preview of the film, and that will encourage them to become a member, and hopefully the filmmakers start getting paid once we get the numbers. But I am incredibly excited about this. Great to be friends oh, with you. Oh, it's <laughs> very great to be friends with you. We're here at the Horror Film Festival, and we've seen uh, some really horrible stuff and some really great stuff. And it's been a good mix. It's been a fabulous mix. I, I think it has. We saw the, uh, uh, the what was it, the uh, zombie pinup girls? Oh, yeah, the contest. That was amazing. That was pretty crazy. Some crazy nurse won, but she's not really a nurse. She's a liar. And uh, we interviewed a young girl who, if you touch her, you'll turn into a Grim Reaper. Um, I saw the Grim Reaper. And we did see the Grim Reaper, like where I've seen every horror movie in the world, and then I, I am. I'm desensitized and numb, and I'm a cutter. 